Did you know that Singapore has more than 800 species of spiders and about 50,000 different species of insects? But most of us don't even notice them unless it's that cockroach that flies into your house. Well, today we're going to find the rest of them in our little red jungle. Wow, look, now you have so many plants and animals. <laughs> On Earth, at least 75% of all animals are arthropods. So that means your insects, arachnids, crustaceans, and your don't know how many pits. So today we are back in one of Singapore's most biodiverse nature spaces, Bukit Timah Nature Reserve, and I brought along my macro lens to see what we can find creeping and crawling around. Hmm, okay, come, let's go. So if any of you have been here before, you'll know that climbing up just the first slope from the entrance is like living hell. So if any of you want to act fit, right, you'll come here first and talk. Huh? Okay, but for the rest of you who need to take breaks like me, when you stop along the path to take a breather, take a look at the plants around you and see if you can spot this. Okay, so if you have tracked around our forests, you might have seen this small little thing sticking out from the leaves before. Some of you might think it's some lizard poop or maybe it's just some small twig, but the truth is, this is a bagworm. So bagworms are the caterpillars or larvae of the bagworm moth, and they actually live inside of this casing. So they make this protective outer layer from silk and materials from their surroundings. You can see uh, if you gently push their casing down, you can see that there is a caterpillar living inside. So there are actually several different species of bagworms in Singapore and each of them makes a very specific looking kind of bag. And if you really take a lot of breaks while climbing up Bukit Timah, right, you'll notice that they are everywhere and they are not just some twig. But don't worry, they are harmless. They mostly just want to feed on their leaves and not be disturbed and they don't even move around much to begin with. So you know what, let's not disturb it any further and uh, let's continue climbing. Okay, I have to move to somewhere more spacious because just now I found a swarm of termites. Okay, and the path that the termites were on were a bit too narrow for me to film there, so here I am. And I don't know if you can see this, but the termites formed a trail that spanned four to five poles long. And you might think, so many termites confirmed can see one, right? Well, just now an auntie was walking by and even though she saw me filming, she still put her hand on the rope and uh, I told her to watch out, but uh, it was too late. So be careful of where you put your hands when you're in the forests. So if you don't already know this, termites are not ants. Although they may seem similar from afar, their bodies are actually very different up close. Ants have three distinct body segments, as with a lot of insects, but termites on the other hand look like they only have two. They actually do still have three, uh, but it just only looks like two. And although we might mistake them for ants, the two of them are not even closely related, with the termites actually being more related to the cockroach. And ants and termites are actually natural enemies, with ants being the termites' biggest predators. But this doesn't mean that termites are harmless because soldier termites still have very big and strong mandibles and they will bite. So again, be careful of where you put your hands on when you grab something, especially in the forest. Okay, the sun is going down, but before I go home, I need to show you some spiders. Now just a reminder, spiders are not insects, they are arachnids. Although both of them are in the arthropod phylum. Uh, okay, I know this is very confusing, so take your time to process it. But in the meantime, I've got two spiders to show you. So actually, as I've been walking around this whole nature reserve, I noticed that there are a lot of spiders around. Some of them are really, really small, while others are humongous, like this one over here. And this here is the golden orb weaver. Now, although they are one of Singapore's biggest spiders and they're not even that uncommon, they are still pretty overlooked because they are usually motionless in their web waiting for their prey. And I don't know if you can see this on camera, but their webs are so huge and intricate. It has even been noted that their webs can span over 1.5 meters wide, which makes sense since the females of this species can grow to as big as 20 cm, including the length of its legs. And that is longer than your school ruler. Males, on the other hand, because of sexual dimorphism, are really tiny at about one-tenth of the female's body size. 
Okay, speaking of smaller spiders, let me bring your attention to this smaller spider that I have found. And this here is the St. Andrew's Cross Spider. Okay, so this one here, based off of its colouring, is a juvenile. And it's very, very tiny. And even as a juvenile, they are very recognisable because they will go into this cross formation where they will close up their eight legs together in pairs to make this X shape. But they are named cross spiders not only because of this formation, but also because the adults will literally make a cross on her web with bands of silk. Although as of now, there is still no hard explanation or consensus as to why they do this. And some of the theories include using the eggs to make their legs look longer to ward off predators. And then some researchers think that the eggs makes the web stronger by making it more stable. And then others suggest that the eggs attracts prey to the web. But whatever the reason, I think it's just so cute that you know a spider is just there posing like that. Uh, but it's so small and people don't even notice that it's there, so its pose is going to waste. So I hope that now with this video, you will all start looking for little axes in the forests, you know, when you're here. And also look out for your fake twigs or your bag worms or those termites on the ropes and those 1.5 meter wide spider webs. Yeah, okay, as you can see, the sky is getting dark, so this marks the end of this episode. To be honest, I filmed quite a lot of macro footage that I don't think I can fit into this one video. So maybe I might come back another time to make a part 2 of this episode, especially if you guys like arthropods. And before I go, I would like to give a shout out to my patrons. Bite Size Productions, Ping Hu Master, Just Juice, Crooked Spider and Low Eli. Thank you for supporting this channel. And if you'd like to support this channel directly as well, you can find the link to my Patreon down in the description below. And for the rest of you, follow me on my other social media platforms and subscribe to watch more videos of our local ecology. Thanks again for watching and remember, keep your eyes peeled because it is a jungle out there with a lot of insects and they are going to fly into your face.